Welcome, soccer friend, to the magical world of soccer bedtime stories, where dreams and goals come together. I'm your host, Tomek, and I'm here to accompany you on a journey through the stories of some of the greatest players, games, and tournaments as you drift off to sleep. If this is your first time visiting our soccer dream world, and you enjoy the story, we welcome you to follow and subscribe to listen to all the stories in our library. If you are a returning soccer dreamer, we encourage you to review, comment, star, and like the stories you love most. Your feedback and ideas help us get better and help to expand our soccer dreaming community. Please reach out to us. It's as easy as a pass to a friend. You can just email us at soccerbedtimestories at gmail.com. Enjoy the story, sleep well, and dream big. Hello there. As we embark on our adventure, soccer friend, let's take a deep breath, snuggle up in a cozy blanket, surround ourselves with warmth and comfort. Tonight's story is one that will transport us to a magical world where anything is possible. We'll meet heroes, some villains, travel to far off lands and experience incredible adventures together. So let's close our eyes, relax, and get ready to embark on an unforgettable journey that will fill our dreams with wonder and excitement. Chasing the Dream, the 2001 Champions League Final. In the heart of this footballing saga, Under the dazzling floodlights of destiny, Manchester City embarked on the spiral leg of their European travels. It was a night they etched their names in the books of history in pursuit of a dream long cherished. This was their maiden dance on the grand stage of the European Cup, the UEFA Champions League, a debut to be remembered. At the helm of the city ship stood the illustrious Pep Guardiola, his third rendezvous with destiny, his first stints orchestrating symphonies of triumph with Barcelona in 2009 and 2011, both against the formidable Manchester United. The citizens earn their name in the stars to be the phoenix that rises from the ashes, a dream that Chelsea had once turned into reality feet that had eluded City for so long. The stage was set, a chance for City to redefine history, follow in Chelsea's footsteps. Across the pitch, Chelsea too possessed their own lore, a legacy carved with European steel. It was their third dance under the silver moon of the European Cup, the Champions League, the first since they conquered Bayern Munich in 2012. A tale of triumph written in distant lands and now distant times. Thomas Tuchel, the maestro at the helm, etched his own name on the tablets of managerial excellence. A journey that saw him rise, then fall in the grand theater of European finals. A promise unfulfilled with Paris Saint-Germain in 2020. A chance at redemption in the city of the undefeated. The city of Porto. As the clock neared 8 p.m., a hush descended over the stadium. An electric air crackled with anticipation. Thousands gathered, their hearts beating in unison, their dreams woven into the fabric of this grand spectacle. In the fourth minute, a whisper floated in the wind as Kai Havertz like a master painter brushed the ball across the expanse of the Manchester City penalty area, yet the moment was seized by Ederson, the guardian of City's hopes. Five minutes passed like fleeting dreams and the narrative unfolded anew. Ederson, the master of precision, launched a long kick that found its mark in the form of Raheem Sterling. The ball at his feet, Sterling danced on the precipice of glory, ready to etch his name into the story, only to be thwarted by the resolute Rhys James, who stripped him of his aspirations. Havertz, a maestro in the symphony of fate, then passed the torch to Werner, 
In the theater of dreams, Werner stood at the cusp of history, but the ball slipped through his fingers like grains of sand when he attempted to seize his moment from close quarters. In the 15th minute, Mason Mount, the conductor orchestrating Chelsea's movements, delivered a pass to Warrior, who unleashed a thunderbolt straight into Ederson's waiting embrace. The subsequent strike, like a meteor hurtling towards the earth, was tipped away for a corner the destiny of the ball altered by the fingertips of fate. Ben Chilwell, the artisan of crosses, painted his masterpiece as he arched a delivery to the far post. In Golo Kante, the silent warrior leapt into the air, his head and arrow seeking glory, soared above the Manchester City bar, an ode to missed opportunities. In the 28th minute, Phil Foden, the young prodigy, found himself in a solitary moment of clarity. A pathway to glory lay before him, but Antonio Rudiger, like a sentinel, stood in his way, tackling with the ferocity of a line he denied Foden his moment of triumph. Two minutes later, Kyle Walker, the architect of City's ambition, sent a message across the Chelsea penalty area, a message that fizzled just beyond the outstretched reach of Mares, who yearned to embrace it to make it his own. With ten minutes remaining in the half, Ilke Gundogan, player with fire in his veins, etched a name in the referee's ledger. His fall on Mount became the first blot on the canvas of this epic, earning him a yellow. The crowd murmured, the players battled, and destiny continued to weave its intricate tapestry on the hollowed pitch. In the 38th minute, the enigmatic N'Golo Kante, a midfield maestro in blue, wove his spell on the field. His deft touch conjured a fleeting opportunity for Kai Havertz, a chance to etch his name in the stars, but... Alexander Zinchenko, like a shadow, emerged from the darkness with a tackle that denied Havertz his moment of glory. A minute later, destiny took an unexpected turn. As Chelsea was forced to make its first substitution of the evening, Thiago Silva, towering figure in their defense, succumbed to the cruel embrace of injury in his place. Andreas Christensen stopped onto the stage, a new character in this unfolding drama. Three minutes before the halftime whistle, the narrative took a dramatic twist. Mason Mount, the orchestrator of dreams, delivered a pass and Havertz seized the invitation with both feet. He found himself one-on-one -on, -one on a duel with Ederson, the custodian of Manchester City's hopes. Ederson rushed out, a colossus in motion, deflecting the ball away with a desperate touch. But Havertz, like a poet painting with his emotions, passed it into an empty net, and the stadium erupted into a crescendo of cheers. The scoreboard bore witness. One, zero. The clock ticked, and there were three precious minutes of stoppage time. As the heck second half dawned, neither side chose to rearrange the chessboard. Manchester City emerged with a renewed figure dominating the early exchanges of the act that lay ahead. Twelve minutes into this new chapter, the relentless Antonio Rudiger found his name in the referee's book, a yellow card for his foul on City's Kevin De Bruyne. The challenge exacted a heavy toll as De Bruyne, the talisman of the City faithful, left the field in tears, casualty of the stringent concussion protocol. In his stead, Gabriel Jesus stepped into the fray, a substitution born of destiny. Two minutes later, a moment of high drama unfolded as Manchester City's collective voice cried out for justice in the form of a penalty. The ball had struck Rhys James, a guardian of Chelsea's hopes, on the arm with his, within his own penalty area. V.K.R. The unseen arbiter of fate scrutinized the scene with unwavering resolve. In the end, the verdict was delivered. The ball had first kissed James's chest before glancing off his arm. A twist of fate that left City's faithful crestfallen. In the 64th minute, the chess masters of the teams made their moves. Bernardo Silva, a fleet-footed artist, made way for Fernandinho, a midfield general. For Chelsea, Christian Pulisic, a spark of lightning, replaced Warner a change of tempo that added a new layer to this unfolding narrative. 
With a mere 21 minutes left on the ticking clock, the city faithful held their collective breath, a chorus of hope reverberating through the stadium. Manchester City, like a tempest, pressed forward, relentless in their quest for an equalizer. Marez, a conjurer of magic on the wings, sent a cross soaring into the heart of the Chelsea defense, seeking the head of E.K. Gundogan. But the steadfast Cesar Azipultpeta stood like a sentinel, his clearance denying the city's aspirations. Four minutes spun like eternity as Pulisic improvised, flicked the ball into the path of Havertz. The exchange was a ballot of dreams. Havertz returned the favor to Pulisic, who, with fire in his eyes, unleashed a shot that tantalizingly rolled just wide of the city goalpost. In the 75th minute, Sterling, the embodiment of City's ambitions, orchestrated a move that pulsed with promise. He passed the torch to Jesus, who bore the hopes of thousands of horrors, yet Chilwell, Chelsea's defender of dreams, cleared the path, extinguishing the flames of City's desires. With Sergio Aguero, the highest goal scorer in the City's history, preparing for his last dance in the sky blue, City made their third substitution. A poignant moment as Aguero took the stage for Sterling, the torch of destiny passed from one legend to another. Chelsea made a change as Kovacic entered the arena, replacing the tiring mount, whose contribution had been the heartbeat of the midfield. Five minutes later, in a scene that bore the hallmark of cinematic drama, Aguero attempted to put his name in the stars in the constellation one more time. He lofted across to the far post the presence of Foden and the young maestro, but it was plucked from the heavens by Edward Mendy, Chelsea's guardian. A minute later, Kyle Walker, the master of precision, painted the canvas with an outswinging pass that danced on the edge of destiny, narrowly missing both Aguero and Foden, leaving hearts beating slowly, then quickly, then slowly. With two minutes remaining, Jesus the relentless warrior got his name put into the referee's book, a yellow for his card on Havertz, but Christian Chin, Chelsea's guardian in defense, stood tall his block, a testament of his resolve. As the hourglass of regular time drained, the fourth official signaled that a minimum of seven minutes of stoppage time would extend the drama. In those final, breathtaking minutes, Marez, with the weight of the city on his shoulders, unleashed a half volley from the edge of the Chelsea penalty area, soared towards the heavens, brushing the crossbar in a fleeting caress, heartbeat away from rewriting the script. And then, in a breathless moment, the curtain fell. The match was brought to a close, Chelsea standing victorious with a 1-0 triumph. In the hushed aftermath, history had been written a tapestry of drama, passion, and unyielding spirit woven into the fabric of the night. In the end, as the stadium lights dimmed and the cheers faded into the night, there remained a story that etched far beyond the boundaries of the football pitch. It was a story of dreams pursued and destiny forged, of courage in the face of adversity, and the unwavering belief in oneself. Friend, as you snuggle beneath your cozy blankets, there are two important lessons from the match. First, always remember the magic of teamwork, just like the players on the football field. When you work together with your friends and family, you can achieve extraordinary things. Like a symphony of voices creating beautiful music, your combined efforts can light up the darkest of nights. Secondly, in life, my friend, there will be times when you face challenges and things may not always go as planned. Just like the football players who learn from their setbacks, you too can learn and grow from your experience. Remember that even in the face of defeat, you can rise like a phoenix, stronger and wiser than before. As you drift into your dreams, Carry these lessons in your heart, for they will guide you through the adventures of tomorrow as you make your own stories. With love and dreams, sleep well and dream big, dear soccer friend.
Hey soccer friends, if you enjoy soccer bedtime stories, you might also enjoy the Soccer Time Machine podcast. It is a soccer history daily for kids by kids. Join our young soccer fans on an epic adventure through the history of the beautiful game. From legendary players to historic moments, we'll explore it all in a fun and engaging way that's perfect for young soccer fans like you. So grab your jerseys and get ready to kick off this exciting journey with the Soccer Time Machine podcast on August 1st, wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe and follow to make sure you don't miss an episode. Now, off to our bedtime story, Sweet Soccer Dreams.